has released some pretty beautiful iOS apps lately, like YouTube, Gmail, and Maps. How'd that happen? There's only one way to find out. Head to the campus, talk to people who made the apps, and figure out just how Google upped its design game. So I'd say if you pulled a Googler on the street, you'd be more often to find that they're on an Android phone than an iOS phone, just by nature of we make Android, but there's, there's a lot of iOS users. Yeah, I'm constantly surprised how many Googlers you talk to and ask which platform they use, and they'd pull out two phones. <laughs> One from each pocket. <laughs> I have both. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a corporate phone, I have a personal phone, I have a tablet. I actually, I also have an Nexus 7 for reading books, but it's at home. <laughs> in 2011, Larry Page became the CEO of Google, and he issued a mandate, redesign all of the major apps. They called it Project Kennedy, and the crazy thing is that it worked. Google doesn't have a Johnny Ive who dictates design across all of its products, but they found a way to make everything that they do on iOS and Android relatively consistent and also very pretty. On the day that Larry became CEO, he also said, hey, everyone, we're going to redesign all of our, our products. <laughs> uh, oh, and we need to do it by this summer. There was a previous endeavor to do this. It was called Kana. It was a bit of a bottom-up approach. And we came up with a, really, a series of really interesting, great designs, but we, it was hard to get traction because, again, you kind of have to mobilize an, the entire company to make it happen. You know, historically at Google, I think there were pockets of, of designers or, you know, or, or, or teams that um, and they were like, oh, let's bring all of Google together into one you know, beautiful, amazing design, right? Uh, but they were, they were sort of, because of the way that Google set up, I mean, again, for speed, right? You know, there's this de dependency factor. We want to lower dependencies on products so that they can move fast. Um, it was kind of hard for any one team to push that Google-wide. So it really required the vision of someone like Larry, who can rally the entire company to make it happen. Larry Page didn't take the traditional route. He looked outside Google's Mountain View campus to New York City where the company runs an isolated design studio called Creative Lab. It's known for producing Google's famous Parisian Love Super Bowl ad and an innovative Arcade Fire music video that utilized Google Maps. Lead designers at Creative Lab worked with Google product designers to work out a sharp, modern take on applications like Search and Gmail. Some of these same design ideals seem to have found their way to Google Now on Android under the direction of Matthias Duarte. Google, traditionally, not really well known for design but it's really changing. Google passionately cares about design, and the entire company is transforming itself around that idea. And Google Now is a great example in so many ways to talk about design and the rise of design culture and the way that design works at Google. Because design is not just about making things more useful, it's not just about making things more beautiful, it's about really figuring out what is the right thing to make and how to make it right. When Google Now began, it, it was really this, this mandate and this vision from Larry that, that Google could be better than instant, that Google could be almost psychic. And this was you know, a very shocking, provocative <laughs> direction and, and, and definitely scary and disturbing, but it was a very different way of thinking about uh, product. It's not like, oh, we're working on a feature, we've got this idea, we've, we're gonna add these little incremental things. It was a vision, um, and that was awesome. And, and then the job of the designers was like, okay, how do we get there? What can we do with that vision? Design is really about kind of, I like to think of it as, as, as practical imagination, imagining possibilities and making them real. So one of the essential parts of that is to do it. Like you just have to do a lot of it, iterate a lot, look at everything. And only when you've done it, done like every possible variation that you can think of, then you realize, oh, there's actually one thing we didn't try. Right. Let's try that. This is different explorations about how we'd actually render the context header. We were trying to decide, like, should the context headers, you know, be photography? Should it be tight illustration? Should it be this oh, wow. watercolor -y illustration, right? Like, we tried a lot of different things. We, we created context headers, again, in this very brushy look, and we thought, oh, this looks beautiful. It looks amazing on the screen. But again, it's a little bit off from, from, from the Google brand. We tried right. something a little bit more technical, and then it it's just felt a little, little fussy, yeah. right? Um, so, so this is like just the kind of level of iteration we go through. Like, what if we do the Google box with the hollow style entry field? Right. It doesn't feel Googly enough, right? You know? There are challenges associated with building apps for any platform that isn't your own. And here's the issue with iOS. You want your apps to look like Google apps, but feel iOS native. The, the strategy initially was to get a presence, a Gmail presence on iOS. So, you know, looking at the raw materials that we had to work with, what we started with was the web version of, G of Gmail for the phone. And we took the pieces of it that needed to be native 
and we made those native and, and built an experience on the phone. I think when you look at the, the app today, it's still based on those, those same underpinnings, but just a huge amount of work has gone into making it fluid, making it really responsive. And then on the visual design side, which I think everyone is, is reacting to recently, really making great strides in evolving what Google's visual design aesthetic should be on iOS. You know, when I judged you on Google five years ago, there was no such thing as a common design language for, for a platform. <laughs> and I think we made a huge progress over the last few years, and um, especially on iOS, you know, and, and users notice that. They really appreciate the recent redesigns. And, you know, when we launched Gmail 2.0, when we launched Maps, when we launched YouTube, uh, and, and YouTube 1.1, and YouTube Capture, uh, we got a lot of this positive feedback of users talking about consistency of visual language and, and Google actually being able to find its own language for iOS. Google succeeded in creating a host of mobile apps that all adhere to one cohesive personality. And at least for now, it seems to be working. If you go back to like kind of the original iconic homepage, why is it this clean white surface? Where do we, where do we kind of take what's great about Google design and try to express it in many more places? We wanted to have the same level of simplicity that Google always had. We worked very closely with uh, John Wiley's search team and we got together in this giant war room and just churned and mashed and just, you know, iterated. We would just kind of go through it endlessly, just debate and look and, and, and create mock-ups and talk about them and go through that process. And then as we launched these changes to Google, as we launched them to, to Google products, we wanted to keep up that momentum. I'm the lead for mobile maps, and I talk with the people who work on desktop maps. But I also go and we have meetings with the people who are working on various iOS maps. Right. And we'll just uh, have a very casual get together, but on a regular basis to talk about feedback we have for each other and things we've tried. And really it's about what's freshest and best of all the things that we're working on so that everybody can somewhat selfishly like have that in their product too. And we don't have like a single mastermind designer. It's all about teams iterating together and, and talking and sharing information, making sure that at some point we're kind of ending up in the sweet spot where our design language is very similar. It, it, it fits well into the platform, but at the same time, it keeps being Google. <laughs>